Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Zoe Archer is doing a color along for the month of May and it is from the Colortronic books. It is called Colortronic May and I love this book. So seeing as how I had this one, I just recently purchased the other one and I will show this in my end of the month coloring book haul. Um, but, um, I had asked her if, uh, she could color the rose out of this one because she had stated in her previous color along from this book if there was any picture that we would like to see her do to let her know down below. So I asked if she could do the rose and I believe she will be doing that next. So I thought what I would do is I would color along with her and also do the rose and I thought, mm, as long as I'm coloring it, why not do it on camera? And we will do a color and chat. So, I picked out my coloring medium of choice. I decided to use my Faber-Castell Pit Pens for this picture. And I did not realize until I was looking through this book, every single picture has a different color key to it, which I don't like because I like picking out my colors for the book, writing them down, and then I know I have them for the entire book. But each picture is a little bit different. They have a little bit different numbering system to their colors that they use. So you have to pick out colors for each individual picture. So I went through, picked out my colors for this particular picture, and I got most of them pretty close. I think one of the purples is just off um, a little bit, um, but eh, you don't have to match them exactly. So I have my uh, pit pens in this case. Any of you that have the uh, Faber-Castell pit pens know they come in that really nice cardboard box. It has a tie um, that you pull up and it um, layers your each tray of the pens out. For some reason, mine broke. <laughs> so I took that you couldn't pull them out any longer. Um, and there was something with one of the, the little trays that you can pull out. I can't remember exactly. So I took them out of that case and I put them in a pencil case that I had. It's just an older one. Um, and they're in here kind of snug, but it works. So um, I don't know if I'm going to try to fix that case or if I'm just going to leave them in here or what. But for now, it works. All right, so I did write down my colors that I am going to be using in this rose. I think what I'm going to do, because this book is so big, um, this page is over hitting my iPad that I'm looking at. So I'm going to pull you over a tad. Don't get dizzy. So that I can push my book over a little bit and it won't get in the way quite so much over here. So let me adjust things a little. Alrighty, so I am just going to start with number one. And that is 192. Let me see. So I do not have them out of my case. <laughs> I could have maybe done that too. That's not it. Let's see. Yep, this one. Okay. So. I actually remembered to bring a couple of Ricola throat lozenges along in case I get into one of my coughing spells, <laughs> which I hardly ever do. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the pit pens, these are actually India ink. They're they are water based, so they you know. Um, are going to make kind of like your lines, you know, they're not going to smooth, you know, draw smoothly or color smoothly like an alcohol based marker. Um, but instead of just regular water based ink, they are India ink and they have this really nice fine tip 
brush pen to them. So that's why I thought, hmm, maybe these will work good in this book. I'll see what they do, you know, on this uh, uh, smooth paper. And that's right, I should put this back behind. I don't think they're going to bleed through, but you never know, right? So I want to see how these pit pens work in this book. I have not used these pens in a while. So I thought, oh, it'd be good to get these out and use them once. So there is a number one right here. So I have no idea how long it will take to get this picture done and whether it's going to all be on camera. I may um, do a couple of color and chats because I, I can't imagine getting this all done in one color and chat. <laughs> There's just too much to color. But the thing about this book is they're not real detailed. So you do have larger, wide open spaces to color which is nice. It's more um, stress-free color by number, but yet these pictures are so colorful. They're all not realistic colors. They're real bright and vibrant colors, as you can see kind of by the color chart along down the side. So, as you can see, you can see the lines as you color in here, but I don't care. It still looks pretty at the end of the day. Is anybody else participating in Zoe's color along this month? I think I only colored a couple of pictures out of this book so far, so that's why I really wanted to get it out again. Like I said, they are such pretty pictures when they're done. I think I colored the eagle that's on the front cover, and it turned out so pretty. And I thought this rose was just gorgeous, so I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. Like I said, my colors may not match exactly, you know, even though there are, I can't remember how many colors there are in this pit pen set, 60 maybe. And even with 60 colors, you can't get an exact match to, to every one of these. They're kind of limited in some of their, um, like the purples. Um, that's the one that I noticed was really lacking. So, yeah. How is everybody's weekend going? I am recording this on Sunday, and it is beautiful outside again. I had done my unicorn color and chat yesterday, and it was just beautiful too oh i am loving this weather wow color chat color and chat two days in a row for me that's got to be a record <laughs> but i was so excited to get going at this one i just last night if you've seen i'm not sure if it'll be up before this video or after um I bought a couple of new color by number books. It's these circle mosaics where you color in all the teeny little circles. And the one book is called Easy. So the circles are, you know, a little bit bigger. And I'm going to have to move my iPad back a little bit because it's really getting in the way here when I want to push the book over. Again, this book is so big and so wide, so when I have the cover open, it's running into stuff over there. Let's see. 
any more ones over here. I thought there was, and I thought that's why I shifted my book down, but maybe not. Um, oh, as I was saying, I got out a couple of those new Circle Mosaic books that I bought, and I did one out of the Easy book. That was so much fun. Oh, I... Uh, put on a couple of color and chats, and I don't see another number one out here, but I'm going to leave this marker out because I am known for missing numbers. <laughs> I always miss something. So number two is a red, and I picked 219 Deep Scarlet. I thought this one... Nope. Of course not. Is it uh, this one? Yes. Okay, so number two. Um, so yeah, I had such a good time on that one that I wanted to get out the other book. And oh my gosh, you talk about extreme. That, that's what the title should be is Extreme <laughs> Circle Mosaics. Oh my heavens. I mean, I I have done a fair amount of detailed pictures, designs in my day. But oh, holy Hannah, even my eyes had a hard time seeing those numbers. I was kind of going cross-eyed there for a while. And I will be showing that picture at the end of the month then for things that I've colored during the month. I mean, the picture turned out gorgeous. I just finished it up before I started recording this and it's of a really pretty parrot, but oh, holy cow. Coloring in all those itty bitty little circles. I mean, they're probably about the size of a pinhead, a, a stick pin. <laughs> they're about that big. They're smaller than diamonds for diamond painting. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who diamond paint, you know how small them are. <laughs> but the thing that was nice about it is I used um, Sharpie and Amazon Basic Ultrafine markers. And with them being alcohol and with the circles being so teeny, all you had to do was go around in a circle and not go quite up to the black line because otherwise it would bleed over. And yeah, you didn't have to outline the circle and then color it in at all because they're so teeny. If you just outlined the circle, it was colored in already. So it actually went pretty fast and uh, turned out really, really pretty. So that was one of the smaller sized pictures in there. It didn't take up the whole page. So I probably will be going back into there and trying another one that's maybe a little bit bigger. Now that I have those books, thankfully, all of the mosaic, the circle mosaic and their squares and rectangles, all of those follow the same color scheme. So number one in one book is the same color as number one in the next book. So again, I like that because now I have all my colors picked out, which one I use for number one, etc., etc. So now all I have to do is pick out that list and I am good to go. So yeah, I may do one of those super teeny ones again, or I may get out something to color with my gel pans. I don't know. I think what I actually would like to do is go back to some of my Sun Life drawing books, the line and dot books. I just love those. They are just so easy to do, so stress-free. Um, I have all my chores, my adulting things that I have to do today. 
you know, get dishes done. Don't have laundry to do. I got that done, but, you know, the typical vacuuming and all of that stuff. I like to wait till Sunday evening to do that so I know the carpets are clean before Maddie gets here tomorrow. Started doing that when she started crawling. It's like, oh, you know, I know I have a lot of cat hair in this house and I don't like the thought of her crawling around on carpets that have a bunch of cat hair on. So I would always wait till Sunday night and then periodically throughout the week so that I knew my carpet didn't have a ton of cat hair in it <laughs> and she was crawling around in that. <laughs> oh. And now even though she is up and about, she is almost three now, I cannot believe that. But Heather is expecting her other little one the end of July. No, yeah, the end of July. So that is going to be coming up really fast. So, I imagine by the end of, depends upon how soon she goes back to work with her kind of running the place now. Um, because the guy that was the general manager of the place where she works at went to another building. So now she's running this particular building. So, they'll have to see how long they can get along without her. So knowing Heather, she'll probably go back. And I think last time she went back in, she went back to work, I think in like four weeks, four to five weeks. So if she does have the baby the end of July, I would start having the baby here then the end of August to the beginning of September. So, not only is that meaning starting over for her, it's also starting over for me. Oh my gosh. Here I thought once Maddie would start going to school and she probably will be starting pre-K. I don't know if that's going to be this fall part-time. I think maybe. I think they start them now at three, don't they? It's like earlier and earlier. Pretty soon they'll have babies in pre-K that are still in diapers. <laughs> I know right now they have to be out of diapers in order to go, but... And by that age they should be. Maddie still is not totally potty trained, unfortunately. She just has no no interest in it and I work with her throughout the day and I had bought her a it's a potty training system with a little potty chair and then charts that you know you put your stickers on when they go on the potty and she loves her stickers so I thought oh this would be great incentive for her but nope and every time she wets her diaper or poops in her diaper, I'm like, why didn't you tell Grandma? I said, we could have went and sat on the potty chair and you could have got a sticker. And she just kind of looks at me like, yeah, I know. But I don't want to. <laughs> and they say, you know, until they're really ready, they're not going to do it. And I know that was the case with my kids too. My son was very easy to potty train. My girls, not so much. And they do all potty train at different ages. They kind of know themselves sort of when they're ready. Yes, you have to push them along a little bit, but Heather is kind of changing her mind on whether to, she did not want to go to pull-ups. 
because they are so super absorbent. They are just like a diaper. So it doesn't bother them that much to have a wet diaper or a wet pull-up. You know, it wicks the, way, the moisture away from their body that it's not uncomfortable enough. So I know quite a while ago already, Heather had bought in regular underwear for Maddie and over the course of a weekend had put underwear on her thinking she would get uncomfortable enough when she wet them that that would kind of prompt her to want to go on the potty but that backfired Heather just whoops Heather ended up just having to change her clothes umpteen times throughout the weekend so yeah didn't really work and she hasn't attempted that again so she is thinking you know even though the pull-ups they can get really expensive depend well especially in the beginning when they are still wetting them quite a bit before they're starting to get trained but i don't know i tell you if i would have had that option when my kids were growing up i would have went that way I don't remember them really being out either that or they just were first starting them maybe I don't really remember that is just way too long ago they might have had them out now that I'm thinking of it I don't know okay any more tubes let's see if this is bleeding through at all no not in the least. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this out because I noticed as I was going to color over here, I could feel that ridge and I don't, I don't want to have to shift that paper around because again, this book is so big and these pages are all perforated. Um, they perforate after the color chart. So they're perforated right here in case you wanted to tear them out after you were done because of course you want to color it in the book so you have the color chart with the picture but then if you decided you wanted to frame one of these they are perforated so they can come out pretty easy okay I don't see any more twos but again I am going to leave the pen out number three just moving right along is 113 orange glaze and that must be this one because it's the only bright orange i have yes okay number three and we are way up here there's no number there and in the corners so i'm assuming those are just left white So yeah, I'm I'm going to really try to start working with Maddie, setting her down on the potty like every half an hour or so, because boy, it sure would be nice to get her out of diapers before that baby comes. Not just for Heather, but for me too. <laughs> and it isn't just because of the cost, it's... You know, just the hassle of having two in diapers at the same time. And I know that because my youngest two aren't even two years apart. So I did have two in diapers and it does get very expensive and it's taxing on a person to be changing those diapers all the time. So I cannot imagine any of you that have twins out there or... Even worse, triplets or quads. <laughs> I cannot imagine how you people do it. <laughs> oh, my heavens. And not just because of the diaper changing either. The feeding, the cost, <laughs> the everything. You know, getting up in the middle of the night with them, especially once you go back to work. Boy, I remember that. You know, those first few months after you go back to work and the baby is still getting up throughout the, the night 
And if you're breastfeeding, of course, daddy can't get up with the baby, you know, unless you've pumped and you have breast milk expressed, but sorry guys. <laughs> But, you know, typically it's the mom then. In a, way, in a way, it's nice. The household is quiet, and you just kind of have quiet time with your baby. Especially, again, like I said, when you're breastfeeding, you cuddle close with your baby. Many times, you fall asleep in the rocker with the baby because you're exhausted and you know you got to get up in a few hours to get to work. Oh my. These pens do work great in this book. Again, you do get the lines. Just nature of the beast of this type of coloring medium, but still going to be a pretty, pretty picture. And I do think alcohol markers would work great on this paper. It's not as thirsty of a paper as, oh gosh, I hope I wasn't off camera. Um, it's not as thirsty of a paper as the Amazon paper. And it's a nice, smooth paper. I think colored pencils would have a problem on this. Plus the fact, I can't imagine coloring these big open spaces with colored pencil. Even gel pen would be a lot. And you know I love my glitter gel pens. So I think the perfect coloring medium for these books is some type of marker, whether they be water-based or alcohol-based. Alcohol-based, of course, you it wouldn't look as streaky and my next picture that I do out of, I'll probably try something in the other book, the new book that I got. And I think I will pull out some alcohol markers. Maybe my Limoche, because there's 168 in that set, and I should be able to match up all the colors pretty good. Now, right now, it's probably like, what in the heck is orange doing in a rose? If it's not an orange rose. Well, like I said, these are not realistically colored. You're going to find oranges, blues, reds, pinks, you name it. Um, bright greens, everything under the sun in these pictures. And that's what kind of makes them so neat, is they are just so colorful. And as fast as these pit pens lay down color, my gosh. Um, maybe we will get this done in one color in chat. I did a relatively long one yesterday with the unicorn. It was over an hour and a half. So, this one may end up being that long too, but yeah, if I can get it colored in one video. I keep getting the same comments from you guys over and over that we love, love, love the long color and chats. And I know I am the same way. I can't wait until Anne from A Colorful Life puts out her weekly long color and chat. Every week she does a long one. And it's typically on like Saturday or Sunday, sometime over the weekend. And Every week, I look forward to that video. And she just posted her long color in chat. So this morning, while I was coloring in all those little circles, I 
colored in that those itty bitty little circles while I listened to her long, I think it was about two and a half hour color and chat. So it was nice to have something to listen to as I was coloring. And that's why I think we all like that long color and chat, right? Either we're diamond painting or doing some crafting or we're coloring a page of our own and it's just nice to listen to somebody and have the company of somebody that likes doing the same thing you do. Many of us, or I would say most of us, do not have somebody in the household that shares our same interest. <laughs> At least I know I don't. And, you know, most of the other members of our family are not interested in our coloring. Not to say they don't listen to you talk about it or anything, but they just aren't interested in doing the craft, the hobby, like we are. Like we are so addicted. Yes, we get sucked into the madness. <laughs> the collecting, the coloring, the... I mean... You know me, I enjoy the collecting as much as the coloring and the organizing of everything. I I just love organizing my stuff in any way possible so that I can easily find stuff. I would like to reorganize all my pens and pencils somehow because right now they're kind of stacked on top of each other over in the dining room on my one um, dual level storage cart that has the multicolored trays underneath drawers. And so I have all my markers on the top because I have more markers than pencils. And my Copics are there too in that big case. Oops, there's a three here. So that takes up quite a bit of room and I don't want to put things on top of my Copics. I do have that case laying on its side. Even though Copics can actually be stored either horizontally or vertically because of the special way that they are made when both ends are capped, they are in a special vacuum. And so when they're, when they are completely capped on both ends, the ink does not settle to one end or the other. So they can be stored vertically and it will not hurt them at all. But I do like laying mine horizontally because I have the case then sitting upwards and it doesn't take up as much room on my cart in there. So so then I don't want to put anything on top of the Copic case and I just have everything stored next to it. But everything stored next to it, yeah, is stacked on top of each other. <laughs> So you gotta take a few things down in order to get to this, and yeah, yeah. But I'm out of room in that room to add any other storage. So 107 Cadmium Yellow is number four. 107, is that this? Yes. And just moving right along. And four goes all the way up. My gosh, I have a snoring cat behind me. Wow. They're all kind of snoozing in here behind me. I have one on the side of me, Midnight, who's busy cleaning himself. But the other two are snoozing in the cat tree. Misty really snores. I'm surprised you... Maybe you can even hear her, I don't know. But yeah, sometimes I'll be in the living room coloring or, you know, doing something and I can hear her. And I'm like, where are you? And here she's laying 
by the window, the living room window or somewhere over there. And, oh yeah, you can hear her plain as day. Just a snoring away. It's so funny to hear a cat snore like that. My other two don't. It's just her. She is a unique kitty in every... Every... Well, how do you say that? Oh, my gosh. Or maybe it's Callie. Callie's laying on the floor back here. She's my chubby butt. And I don't know why. It's not like I see her eat that much. She just doesn't run it off like the others. Okay, number four. Like I said in a another color and chat video, my Misty, all of us, and I don't know what it is at night. It's like you get around like 11 o'clock or something and she starts going crazy and she'll tear off from one end of the house to the other. And it sounds like I have a Shetland pony in my house. Thump, 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 and then she'll come back from the other end too. And there's nothing that she's chasing or anything. She's just running lickety split like a Shetland pony. Bella kind of wakes up and looks like, what the heck is that? She should be used to it by now, though, because it happens almost every night. It's like all of a sudden she gets ants in her pants and has to wear off some energy. Callie should do that and wear off some calories. Jeez. Call her my chubby butt. And Misty is my sassy pants. <laughs> because you can be petting away, you know, and she's just purring away. And you're petting her, and all of a sudden she'll turn around and nip at you. <laughs> oh, especially if you get your hand in front of her mouth. Don't ever get your hand in front of her mouth. <laughs> because, yes, she will nip at you. Not hard or anything. I think it's just something to get your attention. Like, okay, don't get too comfortable petting me. I am still the boss. And she is also my cord chewer. I know I've mentioned that in a previous color and chat too. How we have to cover all of our cords in wire loom so that the little stinker can't chew through all of our lamp cords, my charging cords. Although I do now get the braided charging cords and those she leaves alone. But the ones that are regular wire or, you know, the kind of rubbery type of cords, oh, those are her favorite. They're like dessert to her. She's like, let me at them. So yeah, those all have to be covered up in wire loom. She had gotten at my Kirby cord to the point where she's lucky she didn't get electrocuted. Although I don't think I had it plugged in at the time, so she's lucky. But Bob was able to fix that and wrap it up with electrical tape and knock on wood it's been working ever since that was a couple years ago so yeah she's just uh that's why i call her my sassy pants she she is just a very different creature but she is such a cuddle bunny oh she just curls right up in your lap and just lays there and purrs away. I mean, you don't even have to pet her, and she's just purring away, happy to be in your lap. And between Jaden and I, we are her people. You know how pretty much every animal in a household kind of imprints on one person, or I should say one person imprints on that animal. 
and it seems like that is the person that they are connected to most, right? For those of you who have pets, whether it be you as, you know, primary caretaker of the dog or cat or whatever, or if you have a, a dad in the house, you know, a husband, whoever seems to like give that animal the most attention or something, it seems like they're attached to that particular person the most. And sometimes the other person just will not do, right? All right. Now, number five is a light yellow. Do we have any fives? Oh, there's one. I think that's the only one. Okie dokie. So, number five is ivory. I'm sure that is this first one. Yes. Let me take a sip. We are 40 minutes in and I have not coughed yet. Knock on wood again. Oh, there are two fives. Oh, three. It's kind of more in the center part here. Am I on camera? Yeah. I also wanted to do this color and chat during the day, seeing as how I am having so many lighting issues at night. I am definitely going to have to try some different lighting scenarios. I don't want to put the lamp over here on my right side because I know as I color I am going to have shadows then where I am coloring. So I don't really want to do that either. But I will test each thing. And the lamp itself is too tall to fit underneath my overhead bin. So I can't do that. I don't know. Maybe if I try some lighting way up on top of the overhead canopy, maybe that would work. Hmm. Oh, I like that light yellow in here. Oh, that's pretty. I think this rose is going to be gorgeous when it's done. I'm real curious to see how Zoe's is going to turn out. And I, of course, I am not going to put my video up until she has hers out. I do not want to precede her, seeing as how this is her color along. She was just um, starting a, I think it was a French bulldog that she was doing. And then she was going to be starting the rose. And typically what she does is she will start the picture online, or on camera I should say. And she always has half hour videos or around a half an hour. And so she will color for a half an hour on her picture and then many times will continue to color it off camera and finish it. So I don't know if that's what she's going to do with that French Bulldog. She goes through her pictures really fast. She is a fast fast colorist when uh, she is she loves sun life drawing too and boy when we had sun life drawing month between me her and sandy wow that girl went through pictures i think she colored two to sandy and mine's every one <laughs> so yeah she really goes to town Okay, number six is a green, light phthalo green. It's kind of on the minty green side. So, 162. This one. Oh, this is written in white, so I can't even hardly read it. 
yes, 162. See, that one, it's really, it's almost impossible to read. I mean, why didn't they print that in black? You part, I don't even think you can see it on camera, can you? The writing, that's, that's a really hard one. Wow. I mean, this spring green, they wrote in black, so you can read it. So why didn't they put this one in black? Boy, they didn't think that one through. <laughs> okay, this was number six. Do we have any sixes in the middle? Probably on the outside, sixes are going to be. Yeah, here's a great, oh, I missed a five. See, I told you, and it's a great big number five, and I still missed it. Okay, I'm hitting over here again. And I have to be on frame. Okay, let's do this. I'll do number sixes, and then I'll go back and get that five. Just like diamond painting, I always miss something. And when I was doing those itty-bitty circles for that circle mosaic picture I was coloring this morning, oh my gosh, I missed a ton of them. But I excused myself on that one because, yeah, they were so teeny. And when you have so many numbers staring at you in the face, it's very, very easy to miss one here and there, especially if it's just a single number. If you have a bunch of, you know, one number like a blue all together, that's easy. But then all of a sudden you get one purple thrown in the mix. Well, yeah, that's really easy to miss. So I started going back when I would see a different, you know, a number that I missed. I would quit coloring the one I was doing and I would get out that other color and color it in right away because I figure while I seen it, I might as well color it in. Well, I quit doing that because as soon as I would color in one that I missed, a minute or two later, I'd find another one of that number that I missed. So it's like I was continually pulling out that same marker. So, okay, let's save some time and let's just wait till I have the whole thing colored in and go back and find the ones that I missed. And that worked much better. That's what I do now with my diamond painting too. Because of course, I miss a ton when I'm diamond painting too. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I do quite large sections at a time. Because, of course, the bigger the section you do, the less you have to pull out those same containers of drills, the same color. Because if you do, you know, color, for example, one, two, three, four, five over here. By the time you open up the next section, you got to get out those same colors to do one, two, three, four, five over here. So if you have that all open at the same time, you know, you're not having to re get out those colors. But the one downfall is, yeah, you're more apt to miss something, but that's okay. You just go back and you get out that color and you fill in the couple that you missed. And then you're like, I can't believe I just missed that whole section. <laughs> Always happens. It's like there's a section of like a dozen of them, and it's like, how the heck did I miss that? But you do. You know, there too, you have a gazillion different symbols, letters, and numbers staring you in the face. And, you, you know, I glance it over a couple of times after I'm done placing all my drills for that color, and I still miss them. <laughs> for any of you that diamond paint, do you do that too? You miss a bunch? Like I said, especially when you do larger sections, 
It seems like you're more apt to miss some. I do have to get at my diamond painting again today. I meant to get at it yesterday, and then I made a number of videos. I recorded quite a bit yesterday, and had to get outside for a bit. Still did not get my hostas cleaned out, though. Uh. And my bleeding heart's already popping through, so got to get them cleaned out shortly, or it's going to get impossible to clean that all out. Same with the hostas. I'm sure there's little... I don't want to say buds, but little shoots springing up underneath there already. And I looked this morning when I had Bella outside to go potty, and we actually have buds starting to open on the trees. I see itty bitty little bright green leaves starting to pop open. Oh, spring is grand. I cannot wait until we have beautiful big green leaves on all of our trees again. Get rid of those ugly naked branches. I hate that. Another reason I hate winter. <laughs> it's just so bare and ugly. Need the greenage. But that's another thing that is great up here is we so appreciate spring, especially after the long, horrible winter that we had this year. You know, we do have the four seasons and now the skiing and snowmobilers have had their season. And now is the season for the rest of us. The golfers have been out on the golfing greens for quite a while already. The amount of fertilizer they must have on those, I don't want to say lawns, on their greens. Especially around the holes where they have to cut, you know, extra short. They've been green for over a month already. And have had to mow them a couple of times already. Especially the super short areas. So yeah, they've they've been out golfing quite a bit already. And we have many, many golfing fanatics around here that I think really go haywire during the winter months. I don't know if we have any internal golfing. I know there are such things as your internal inside golfing ranges. I don't know if we have any in the area. I know there is the only kind of golf I've ever played, <laughs> which is the, uh, oh my gosh, what is it called? The, oh my heavens. I just, I'm at a loss for words. The whatever golf, you know. The fun ones with all the different holes and things you got to go through. Oh my god, I can't remember. I don't remember what it's called. Okay, let's go back and do that number five. I'll think of it while we're talking here. I know I will. It'll pop into my head and I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it's called. And you can always see the golfers because it's right as I'm going to Wassa on the four-lane highway. The golf course runs right along, well, one end of it anyhow, because it isn't a big, it's your regular 18-hole um, golf course. And then we have 
many places that have the newer disc golf where you throw the it's like a frisbee but I, to me it looks just like a frisbee but I guess they're made a little bit differently I don't know so I know my son Cameron plays disc golf you wonder whoever invented that it's kind of strange but I guess it's getting more and more popular so yeah we do have a couple of those places around too. Now why can I remember the name of that golf and not the other one? Hey Bob, what is that called? Oh my heavens. Because I know I played it like when we were in the Dells and there's a lot of them around. There's none right in this area. I told Bob we should go into business and boy, I don't know where the closest one is around here. But yeah, there's really none in this area. I heard there is a inside one somewhere around. I don't know where. And then up in Merrill, I thought this would be so neat to open too. And then I found out there is a place around, and I'm not exactly sure what it's called either, but it's where you have different rooms and there's like puzzles sort of in each one of those rooms that you have to figure out in order to go on to the next room. And your goal is to see how fast you can get through these puzzles because you're being timed to get back out of this house and I know Cameron's gone through that, too. That's right up his alley. He loves challenges like that. Number seven, 171, light green. Is that this? Yes. So, yeah, I've never tried something like that. I, I know I would like it, but I think I would get frustrated because... I would be trying to do it as fast as I can, and I probably won't be, wouldn't be as good at it as I would like to be. And so I, I think it would just frustrate me. <laughs> so I've never tried it. I don't know how much it is to to go through something like that if it's kind of pricey or if it's reasonable. You know, if you get through the thing in 15 minutes versus two hours, you should have, be able to pay less, right? <laughs> Wasn't a challenge for you. You didn't get your money's worth. in different areas of the country. Do you have things like that? Or different areas of the world? You in the UK and Canada and Australia and whoever else is watching. Okay, I think this is my other seven over here. Or what type of entertainment do you guys have in your neck of the woods that is a little bit different than the norm? Like, uh, you know, typical golf ranges and for the different seasons. You know, of course, we up here have our winter sports like skiing, downhill skiing, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, snowboarding, snowmobiling, <laughs> snow everything. The kids love their sledding. So I guess, you know, we are lucky where we have the four seasons. There are kids that never get to experience going sledding or ice skating, at least outside ice skating. I know there are ice skating rinks inside, but it's a whole different experience ice skating outside. In Wassa downtown, where we have concerts during the summer, because there's a great big canopy where the bands are under, 
and it's called the 400 block. And every Wednesday during the summer, they bring a band in, and it's completely free to the public. You can bring in coolers and, you know, your your picnic chairs, and you sit there and you listen to the band for that week. And then in the winter time, they flood that whole area with water, and they maintain it during the winter so that it's nice, smooth ice and you can go ice skating there and then in summertime on a different area they have the well especially in in a park uh, it's called marathon park and they have like a it's a like a kitty water park sort of and they have the water that squirts up from the ground and different little areas they can go through where water is pouring on them and it's really neat and you only pay I think a, kids like 12 and under I think are free and then adults are like a couple bucks so it's nothing that's really expensive the pools to get into are a little more expensive especially if you get a season pass but if you live close enough and you have kids, it's probably well worth it to get that season pass. And yet if you only, I was thinking maybe of taking the kids this summer, now that Maddie's a little older, and taking them there once in a while. Because I know Jaden for sure would love it. And it's good for him to get out and get some exercise. He's a little on the heavy side so anytime he can get out and get some exercise we have a bike for him here and he does love riding bikes so in the summertime he at least gets out and does that and then there is a summer school program for the catholic kids across the way and so Jaden goes over and plays kickball with them and things like that. So I love the fact that they let him join in with them. And he has a good time over there. As long as he's in a good mood and not Bucky. Which does happen way too often. But lately he's been doing pretty good. Wow, this is definitely colorful. Wow, it's getting pretty, isn't it? I know you can't see the whole thing at once, but... And I figured this is plenty zoomed in for as simplistic of a picture as this is. Okay, markers get out of my way. I can't push the book over any farther because it's hitting my brace attached to my desk to hold my phone up above me to record. I have a new one on the way because, like I said, Maddie broke this one. And I can only put it up so far now before it kind of falls back down. It still, I guess, does its job, and I may continue using it for a little bit till I know for sure she's out of her mood of uh, touching it and, you know, wanting to. She evidently must, like, just yank the crap out of it or something in order to bend it like it was. Wow. She's strong. <laughs> I didn't think she'd have the, I mean, it's not steel steel where the, the bracket meets down at the part that clamps onto the table. It's aluminum there, unfortunately, because if it was true metal, she wouldn't have been able to bend it. Um, but still, I didn't think she'd be able to bend it to pieces like she did. <laughs> she had it twisted around and, oh, good. Like I said, Bob was able to twist it back for the most part. 
but it's still weak right there now. So, okay, that was number seven. So on to number eight, 167, Permanent Green Olive. And that's the dark one. Is that this one? No. Let's see. Is that this one? It's upside down. No. Okay, which one is it? 168. It's 167. Okay, hang on, guys. I will find it, I promise. It's kind of hard to find the numbers on here right away. That's 170. Well, what in the world? Which one is it? I thought it was this one. No, that's 264. How many greens do I have to go through? 170. What did I say? No, 168, didn't I? 167. Ah, no wonder. That's 174. 167. All right, all right, all right. Let's get this. There, I found it. I found it. All right, number eight. Just moving right along. Everybody having a good weekend? Mine has been awesome, nice and relaxing beautiful weather so it puts everybody in a good mood i took bella out yesterday just to be outside for a while and <laughs> was so cute she of course thinks she's a bloodhound and just has to sniff at absolutely everything and then she goes in the lawn where the sun is and just lays down and she's sitting there so pretty, watching what's going on. <laughs> so I had to leave her sit there for a while and chill. <laughs> it was so cute. We're not in the front yard typically too much, because when I take Maddie out, we always go in the backyard. My backyard's quite a bit bigger than the front yard, and I don't like being in the front yard. I'm... I'm still self-conscious and I don't like people seeing me and <laughs> so I hide in my backyard and that's where the patio is and stuff too so Maddie and I play out in the backyard and then I have a tie out for Bella so that she can be out with us because she hates it when and I missed a Oh no, that is colored in. It's just so light. Um, she hates it when she's in the house and we're outside. She'll just sit there and look out the patio door at us like, come on, mama. So yeah, I can't stand that little face staring out at me. It's bad enough. We're all outside and Bella's laying in the shade under the i have a big red maple tree out back that is just gorgeous i love that tree and the kitties are staring out the patio door at me <laughs> that's bad enough but they can't come outside they are not outside kitties misty likes to think she is Every once in a while, that little bugger will zoom out on me when I go into the garage. But I found a really nice trick to get her to zoom right back in the house. All I have to do is hit the button to start closing the garage door, and it scares the bejeebies out of her. <laughs> so she zooms right back in the house. 
She used to hide like underneath the cars and oh my heavens, I could never get her. And I'm like, Misty, get over here. But no, now I discovered the trick. Works like a charm every time. Of course, in winter time, she'll just kind of sniff out there and realize how cold it is. And she's like, eh, eh don't want to go out there now. So, not only is she my sassy pants, but she's a smart sassy pants. <laughs> but now that it's getting nicer out, yeah, she's probably going to try zooming out between my legs again. Right in between my feet, she'll all of a sudden, as I kind of turn the other way to, especially if I have Bella with, and she's like, ha, ah, now is my chance to escape. Okay, number nine. I think this is one of the colors I had a hard time matching. No, that's the other purple, 12. Number nine is 136 purple violet. And that's an easy one to pick out. I'm sure it is this one, yes. This is a pretty color. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> number nine so again with these colors you can see how bright and vibrant and colorful this rose is going to be so I want to see the colors of Zoe's rose because of course depending on the color medium you pick and I know she loves her Statler 360s and I was going to color this with the Statler 36s but when I was trying to match up colors I thought the color chart in the front of the book let me show you it quickly I thought this was the standard color chart for the entire book. So I went through and I matched up all these colors and I could not match a few of them with the Statler 36s. Okay, who's going after who? Oh, Bella, no, no. There you go, good girl. Um, so I couldn't use the Statler 326s on this. And then I get to the rose picture and I'm like, what the heck? I thought I just picked out all my colors and I looked at the previous picture and yeah, they're even different from this. So it's like, oh, every picture has its own set of colors. Why do they do that? I mean, they could just have a standard set of 20 colors and then pick from that, you know, what colors you need in each picture. So they only show the, you know, they they number only the, the colors that are needed in that particular picture. Whereas many of the other books, they will have a standard set of maybe 24 colors. And then they will only list the colors out of those 24 that are needed for that picture. But they're still the same colors the same color chart and yeah I liked that much better I'm going to turn you around a little bit here it was just so much easier to go through the book I would have my colors already picked out so and I just got another book that is the same way it's a flip through of some color by number books and uh, three of them are those circle mosaic books that I've been talking about but then there's a fourth one and it is just it's a real simple color by number and it's all squares that you color in but the squares are really big and so the pictures themselves are quite pixelated because they are so big but you can still tell what the picture is so um, I think it should be a fun book but in looking at the back cover I could see for that one too because it has all the color palettes on the back cover that every picture for that one 
also has a different color palette to it. So you can't just pick out one standard set of colors for that either. <sighs> okay, number nine, number nine, number nine. Here we go. Oh, this is so pretty. So I wonder what marker Zoe will be picking to color with. And you know, sometimes she doesn't get her colors, you know, exactly according to the color chart either. And yet her pictures turn out so pretty. So it goes to show you don't have to match them up exactly. And she never has her colors planned out ahead of time either. She just kind of grabs as she goes. She has her basket of markers and because she colors with them so often that she pretty much knows what color is what. So yeah, that's probably why she can get through her pictures so fast. <laughs> Although this one's going much, much faster than what I thought it was going to. Let's see how long have I been jabbering. Of course, <laughs> hour and 15 minutes. Hmm, I guess this is going to be a longer color and chat. If I find enough to talk about. Oh, there's a 10 I forgot. And a 9, and a 9. Wow. Jeez, Lisa. Told you I'd forget some. Glad I left the markers out. Oh, number nine is what I'm doing now, you dummy. <laughs> yes, I talked to myself. Okay, then I'm okay. Except for that nine. So I don't know if I should maybe stop this color in chat and do a second video because otherwise this is going to get really long which i know you guys don't mind we'll see if i can find enough to talk about <laughs> No. <laughs> still coloring, still chatting. <laughs> he goes, done? No, not yet. I'm lucky. He, uh, after he takes a shower, he, every, like, two showers or whatever he does his own laundry <laughs> I'm a lucky girl ain't I <laughs> because before he moved in here with me um out at his place and he lived with a couple of his brothers and sisters yet out at the old homestead where they still live and they have never had a washer and dryer out there and they're out in the country. So that would have driven me crazy. Um, so they always had to come into town, and they still do, to do their laundry. And Bob would do the same thing. And I'm like, you know, it's silly for you to go down in the laundromat, or to the laundromat, plug those machines when I have a perfectly good washer and dryer here. Well, he didn't like to wash. This is when he was a mechanic yet. And so his clothes would get really greasy. He always wore a, a it was basically like a lab coat. Um, anytime he was working on vehicles and he still does that here. He still has one of those coats. And so he wears that over his clothes. So his jeans and shirt and everything does not get all greasy and whatnot, but that lab coat, of course, gets really filthy. 
and so he never wanted to put that in the washer here because he was afraid of, you know, getting the washer all gunked up, and I appreciated that. And uh, finally convinced him that I didn't think, you know, it was going to, it's not like that lab coat was that god awful. You know, it wasn't dumped full of oil or anything like that. Yeah, it got kind of greasy and stuff, but... So then he started doing his laundry here. And now, of course, he doesn't work as a mechanic anymore. Couldn't take it down there anymore. But I'm glad he was a mechanic for as many years as he was, because he sure does come in handy. <laughs> you know, does all the tire changes. That, that man can fix just about anything on a vehicle, so... It saves us a lot of money. Any of you that have to take your vehicles in to be repaired or even for oil changes, you know how expensive that can get. You know, heaven forbid if you blow something like an engine or transmission or, I mean, not only is the part a lot of money, but the labor can cost you, you know, quadruple what the part is, especially if it's something that's going to take many hours to, to do. And, you know, sometimes, especially if it's an older vehicle, it's just much cheaper to just junk the car and get a new one because it would cost you, you know, a couple thousand dollars just to fix the old one, and if the car isn't even worth that. That's how he uh, actually picked up a few cars for us, was people did not want to, when he was still a mechanic and worked up at the garage, and people would have something really expensive go out on their vehicle, and they would have, you know, like 150,000 miles on the vehicle and they just figured it didn't pay to stick a couple thousand dollars into the vehicle and so they would sell it to Bob for a few hundred bucks. Bob would get the part and then fix it. <laughs> so that's how I got my car previous to this, the purple Sunfire. And that car lasted me a long, long time many many years and it had over 200,000 miles on it before it finally kind of went kapot on me because like Bob said if you you know do its regular oil changes and all of that you know these uh, these cars can last for a long long time Especially nowadays where people are hanging on to their cars so much longer than, you know, before, years past. You know, rather than going out and buying new right away. Okay. Let's see. Number 10. Now we go into some blues. And... Let's see, number 10 is Ultramarine. You know, actually, it's really hard to tell sometimes by this color scheme. But I think number 9, instead of being purple, when I looked at it last night under artificial light, it looked like a real deep purple. And that's why I picked that. Now it looks like a real deep blue. And looking at this, I betcha it's a dark blue, medium blue, a light blue. Then we get into the purple and then the pinks. So, next time I do that, if I see this color circle, I'm going to go with a dark blue. So, yeah, I think I kind of blew that one. <laughs> I blew, I <laughs> was not funny. <laughs> I blew that one. Oh, okay, sorry. So, Zadi, 120 Ultramarine. Ah. Uh, 
Um, is it this one? It is not. Okay. Is it this one? It is not. Oh, I thought for sure it was that one. What the heck? I think from now on, oh, it's this one. I will pull these ahead of time. I think actually, before I start this, I'm going to take just a real quick break and I will be right back. Alrighty, I am back. Just had to get up and stretch for a little bit. Like Ann always says, you shouldn't just sit and color for hours on end, right? Without getting up and stretching a little. Okay, we were on number 10. But didn't I, didn't I say I missed one in here? I thought I did. Well, I guess it will pop up unless I don't remember and I colored it in already. Okay, number 10. Let's do this little one way up here. Let me go from the side here. Bob's working on tires out there. He went and he always constantly is looking on Craigslist. <laughs> He's addicted to Craigslist, but he does find some good deals. And he found a, it was a brand new tire on the rim for 35 bucks. So, and it fit for the van. So he has another spare tire, which is nice. The van is older. And of course the spare was underneath the vehicle. And so the rim itself is extremely rusted. You wouldn't want to put that on there. So. He has a better spare now to have in case he gets a flat. It would have been kind of dangerous to put that other one on as rusty as that room was. He had to go out and check on the morning dove too. <laughs> if you've seen my previous color and chats, you know that uh, we have a pair of morning doves that are nesting in the garage. Every morning we open the garage door and I'm assuming the female maybe is on the nest overnight and then the male takes over in the morning. He's always waiting on the Highline wire across the road, across the street I should say waiting to relieve her of her duties so she can go out and eat. And then they must exchange periodically through the day, at least. According to Google, because I thought she was going to be starving to death because it looked like she was always on the nest. And I know they both, when they were nesting, building the nest, I should say, they were both swooping in and out of there with twigs and grasses and by the time we really kind of caught them doing that it was kind of late already because she was already sitting on the nest and you'd go out in the garage and she would not fly off so we figured we better leave her alone she must have had eggs in there already or was ready to lay her eggs. So I had a laugh this morning, though. You know how morning doves make their call? They're hoo, hoo, hoo. And they sound so sad like they are mourning. <laughs> and typically you only heard that male out there. Well, now <laughs> this morning I heard two of them talking back and forth to each other and I'm like, uh oh mama, you got competition now. <laughs> Love them and leave them, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was another female he was talking to or not, but it was kind of funny. Love them and leave them. And mommy in the garage is like, oh, sure. I 
I haven't heard any baby, baby birdies chirping out anywhere. I don't think uh, any of the eggs are ready to hatch from the robins or anything. But because I can remember years past for Mother's Day for my oldest daughter, I always get a hanging basket of flowers whether it's fuchsias or begonias or some type of pretty um, hanging flower that I hang up by my front door. And invariably, I get some type of bird that wants to nest in that basket. <laughs> so they must be late nesters unless Mother's Day is just later this year. No, I don't think so because it's next weekend already. And I know Mother's Day is always in May, but yeah, we I would still get some kind of bird that would invariably nest in that flower. And so anytime you came out the front door, that bird would fly away. And then the birdies would hatch and you just hear them chirping away out there. Good thing we don't go in and out the front door too often. I would just go out there to water the flower and that's how I would see that, oh geez, there's a bird nesting in there, but I still had to water my flower. I would just kind of water around the nest. I don't remember the last year having a bird in there though it was typically some kind of swallow or I don't know if I ever had robin's nest in there and we have a lot of robins around here them birds get all the worms out of my lawn <laughs> I need the worms in my lawn to help aerate it Especially now that I don't have true green come around to fertilize my lawn and, and put weed killer and stuff on. Boy, that made a difference. Having that done, I had a gorgeous lawn. So nice and thick and green, but it got kind of expensive. So I had to quit doing that. So now I have a lot of weeds in my lawn and every fall I would have it aerated where they would go with this machine and it pulled little plugs of dirt out, you know, a whole bunch of them. So it looked like you had <laughs> turds all over your lawn. <laughs> and boy, that was uncomfortable to walk barefoot on your lawn for a while till you had a few rains. And it would soften up those turds. <laughs> and uh, they would kind of just seep slowly back into the, the lawn. But it still, you know, made room for the grass roots to spread so it didn't get so congested. So, I mean, it was really, really good for the lawn to have that done. Have you ever seen those um, spikes that you can buy to put on the bottom of your shoes and then you can walk around on your lawn? I often wonder, does that really work? It's to aerate your lawn, but those spikes can't make very big holes. So it's like, I don't think so. I would feel pretty foolish walking around my lawn anyhow. I have, like last year, Bob and I went out and uh, spread. It was a weed and feed that we put in a spreader, but you were you were supposed to do it after a, like a light rain, so or early in the morning when there is dew so that it would stick to the leaves of the weeds to kill them. 
So I would go ahead of him with the hose and I would hose down <laughs> the entire section of lawn and then he'd go over it with the weed and feed. So yeah, that was that was quite the job. And then later in the year, he had gotten, um, it actually was up from the feed mill. It's a weed killer, a concentrated liquid weed killer that you mix with water and then he has a handheld sprayer that you it's pressurized you pump up and then it's got a hose with a long nozzle on and so I would periodically go around my whole lawn and I have a relatively big lot but I would go around and spray all them flipping dandelions. <laughs> and even though violets are pretty, and I love the pretty little purple flowers, yeah, they were really overtaking my lawn, too. And I'm sure this spring I already see some starting to form. And on the side of the house, the east side, there were some blossoming already. And yeah, the flowers themselves are so pretty, but not in my lawn. They really spread like wildfire. And then I have a ton of these other weeds that just, ugh, they're real broad leaf um, weeds. My neighbor says she calls the one weed, I think she calls them elephant ears or something like that. They have real broad leaves, and those two, they just spread like crazy, and they're big weeds. So, I anticipate sometime this spring, once they've really developed, and uh, especially the dandelions, because you know, once they dry and they white out so that they fly off in the wind. All the seeds go all over in your lawn and just multiply like crazy. So the sooner you can get at them dandelions, the better. And here is a big number 10. So yeah, I'll be out there weeding and feeding. <laughs> They had some weed and feed quite cheap on sale at Menards. When was that? Last week or the week before? And we should have picked some up. Because, yeah, Bob would go behind with the, the feeder, you know, the walk behind thing, and I'd be out ahead spraying it down and... <laughs> It did help somewhat. Underneath that big red maple out back, it really, really needs some black dirt and to be reseeded because that is horrible under the tree. There's not much grass there at all because the sun just doesn't reach there. The red maple has such big, thick leaves so I would have to get some grass seed for shade. But that dirt that's under the tree is so rock hard. There is nothing that would grow in that. Even if I got sod to lay down there, I don't think the sod would even take. And sod is so expensive. I had gotten just... I think a roll or two when quite a number of years ago it's got to be at least let's see I moved in here 10 years ago so probably over five years ago there was a older birch tree out front that just there were so many dead limbs on it that it just you know, it didn't take much of a windstorm whatsoever, and you just had bra dead branches all over. It just, it was a very, very messy tree. And that's why everybody else in the neighborhood had theirs cut down already. 
Mine was one of the very few left, so Bob did eventually cut it down. And then he knew somebody that did stump removal. And so this guy didn't charge Bob very much. And he, I often wondered how they did that. And they just take a, what do you call it? Looks like a big <laughs> drill on the back of a, not a tractor, but a piece of machinery. And they kind of drill into the stump and it kind of chips it all up. And so for the most part, the stump is removed. Now, unfortunately, the roots are still all there and the roots to this tree were coming up to the surface of the ground. So those are still there, but they're no longer growing out, but they're still there. <clears throat> so you can feel them, you know, when you're mowing. They're not high enough out of the ground where it affects the mower though, so. Not too bad, but after that stump was removed, of course, I had a big blank part in my lawn that had no grass. So I did go to Menards and I got a, I think it was just one roll of sod. And even that one roll of sod was quite a bit. And of course, the sod, I couldn't get sod that perfectly matched what's in my lawn. So that that little square of lawn looks a little bit different than the rest of the lawn. Even after this many years, it's a different color even and a different texture. But at least it's green. The sod did take pretty well. So that was good. It's still, it's still a lawn. I think that's all of the tens. So let's go on to number 11. So yeah, I guess I am just doing a long color and chat. Number 11 is up in here. Let's see how fast we can find this color. <laughs> <laughs> One, four to six. I have these pit pens facing the wrong way, so the numbering is upside down. Where did this one come from? I think it was right there. One, eleven. No, 148. And... 154, 146, 110, and I said one, what did I say? 146, there we go, sky blue, 146, okay, 11, 11. So just these in the middle? No, one down here. So, okay. We're getting there, people. We're getting there. Are you guys coloring? You diamond painting? What are you coloring or diamond painting? What's the picture? What book is it out of if you are coloring? And what are you coloring with? Kind of interesting to see what everybody's doing. Are you participating in any of the May color alongs? It's quite a few, including myself, Donna from Color with Donna and I, as you probably know, are doing the Dive into Dover Spark. So I probably. Are both of these 11s? Must be. Um, I probably will be doing this next week, another color and chat out of a Dilver Spark book. 
as you can see by my videos I've been posting and will be posting that is not the only videos I will be doing during the month but that is the feature videos for the month so I do hope to do like at least one a week out of the spark books we'll see what else comes up each week if I have other videos to do something invariably comes up to do which is great either I get a request from one of you guys which is awesome I love it when I get requests you know please do a flip through of this or can you show us this and I did get, um, well, one request was the flip through through the Angie Grace books that I had. So I did do that one. And the other request that I recently got was, you know, I've talked a number of times in the past about how I add alcohol to my alcohol pens to revive them when they get dry and so I did record yesterday a video on that so that should be up shortly not sure if it'll be up before or after this one again it's going to kind of depend on when Zoe gets hers up with coloring this rose and my gosh this is turning out so pretty love the colors in this can you imagine seeing a rose this color in real life wow I know they make roses now just about any color you can imagine by you know crossbreeding them and coming up with just tons and tons of colors every color under the rainbow and I have seen you know the multiple multicolored roses just like many other flowers carnations especially I love the carnations where the tips are different colored than the flower I think those are so pretty And roses are so gorgeous, but I don't like getting receiving roses because they're just so expensive and they just don't last long. You know, carnations are so pretty too and they just, they smell so nice and last longer. And you know, truly, instead of getting cut flowers, like what my daughter gets me, the flowering hanging basket. You know, I have that for the entire summer then. And they're just so pretty. Hanging outside by my front door. I think the next time, too, I'm going to get, pick out colors that are, little bit different in color these colors are so similar of course like I said next time I'm probably going to be coloring with alcohol markers but I did want to try something different and get out my pit pens for a change And yeah, these color awesome in here. So I imagine those Statler 326s would too. And maybe on some of these other pictures, because they do each follow a different color scheme, that the Statler 326s would have enough colors to be able to color in here. I'll have to I'll have to check that out. Like I said, the next 
Colortronic picture I color. I want to color out of the other new book that I got. I think I think these are the only two Colortronic books that are at least when I did a search on Amazon, these are the only two that came up. I will link both Colortronic books down below in case you would like to buy one of these and color along with Zoe too. They are Amazon links. So at no extra cost to you if you purchase through those links or even my generic Amazon link that is also down below. Anytime you purchase anything off of Amazon doesn't have to be what I specifically link. Whenever I buy something off of Amazon, I try to go to somebody's affiliate link on Amazon that I am subscribed to and I follow. And I purchase through their generic Amazon link so that they get a percentage of what I bought and help them out a little. So. Anytime you guys purchase anything through our Amazon affiliate links, it's it's greatly appreciated. You know, we don't make a ton of money off those Amazon affiliate links, but it does help. It helps to purchase things back for the channel. You know, making money is not the reason why we start up our our color tube channels because you just don't make that much money <laughs> i know there are some that can make tons and tons of money because they have a million followers you know or hundreds of thousands of followers anyhow so yeah they have a full-time income with their channels especially if they're technology related or you know things that people are are searching for and clicking on constantly but our color tube channels you know they they don't typically make that much money and I'm flipping you guys around a little bit here so I'm not coloring sideways that's kind of hard to do if it's a smaller area, I can do it, but these larger areas, it's just easier to color up and down rather than sideways, unless I contort my arm around the right way. <laughs> I'm flexible, but I'm not a contortionist. Boy, when you watch some of them girls, the way they can contort their bodies. <laughs> You watch these gymnasts and oh my gosh, it looks like they're gonna break their back in half. They just amaze me. Or on some of these talent shows where they bring their feet, you know, directly over the top of their head. They can see their feet. I'm like, oh my God, how do you do that? I mean, in my younger days, I could do the splits and everything. I was pretty flexible. But nothing like that. Oh my gosh. Uh -uh. Okay, any more levels? There's a few 12s I see. Oh, there's a big 11 down here. And we don't have that many more numbers to go. Just zipping right along. My kitties have actually stuck in there with me. They're still snoozing. Lazy bums. Oh. You know, pets have it so made. 
at least pets that are taken care of. I can't even stand to see any commercials that show pets being abused. Uh, what is it called? ASPCA? Those commercials I, I can't even watch. I have to turn the channel until they're off because I cannot stand to watch those animals' sad faces look at you, and that's why they do it, you know? It's like, oh, I want to help them so bad. And I'm sure many people do. God bless them. That would be one of the first things I would do if I ever won the lottery and got rich. I would want to help the ASPCA, my local humane societies. And there's so many good charities out there. Of course, get my own bills paid off too, but it's just so much good you could do with m your money, right? I definitely would want to help out like the homeless shelters. and We actually in Wassa for, you know, Wassa not being that big of a city, we do have actually quite a big homeless problem even in our area and um, you know the food banks need so much help I will periodically go and donate some canned food some you know boxed food and things like that that they can they can use especially when they do their food drives around Christmas time Number 12, Crimson, 135. So, yeah. You try to help out where you can, right? Here we go. Ah. Alrighty. What number did I say it was on? 12. <laughs> oh. Okay, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, here we go. Let's see, so 12 and 12, is that it? I think so. Let's see, there's 13 and 16 up there, so. Oh, this is such a pretty color. Oh, and next to that other purple. Maybe that wasn't such a bad mistake after all. That is gorgeous together. Can you see? There we go. Ooh, them are pretty next to each other. It wasn't such a mistake after all. I like you. What is color 16 that's going to be below this? Ooh, it's a magenta kind of color. Deep pink. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Pretty, pretty. Now we're getting into the really pretty colors. Purples and pinks. My favorite. <coughs> I just swallowed the wrong way. <coughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, you ever do that? Oh gosh, it goes down the wrong pipe. Oh man. Thank heavens it wasn't much. Sometimes you really have some go down <coughs> the wrong tube and you're just about dying. I'm gonna pause for a moment. Okay, I think I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow oh made my eyes water and everything holy cow couldn't see what I was doing jeez
So now I really can't see how long this video is because now it's in three sections. <laughs> I didn't even, before I stopped the previous recording, I didn't even look to see how long <laughs> that section was. I know the first section was over an hour. Hour and 15 minutes or something like that. So, whenever this goes up, you guys will have a nice long color and chat to listen to. I've been told by a number of you that I have such a soothing voice, I put you to sleep. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I bore you guys so much or what? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm glad I help with your insomnia. <laughs> Alrighty, I think that's all the 12s. Now we have a number of 13s. So that is Pink Matter Lake 129. Let's see, is that this one? No, that's 125. Gosh, I have a hard time seeing what the number is on here. 129, here we go. Oh my gosh, still getting my breath back here. <laughs> ah. Oh, pretty pink. What's, oh yeah, that one's a deep pink, so, oh, this going to be so pretty. And that's why I wanted to do the rose. I wanted Zoe to do the rose so I could do it with her. Boy, with these brush tips, it really, you know, even though the brush tips are fine brush tips, they are really, really nice. And they can get into such teeny tiny areas. You know, it's a long brush tip. And it's not true brush. It's not the bristles, which I have a hard time controlling. You know, like those water brush, uh, watercolor brush pens. I have a hard time controlling those because the bristles splay out on me so they don't stay in the black lines where I need them to. <laughs> so I like the control of the felt tip brush pens so much better. Like what's on the Copic, those brush tips are awesome. But these are really, really nice too. Like I said, they're just so teeny and fine, but yet, as you can see, they very quickly color in large areas. They are kind of pricey. They are Faber-Castell after all. So they are not your budget friendly pens, but they are very, very nice. So, at some point in the future, I do want to try Anne's trick of putting clear gesso down on a coloring page and coloring with these, possibly along with some of my other water-based markers, you know, the budget-friendly ones, because I do have a number of those sets too, along with like the Crayola Super Tips, and I'm not even sure what ones I all have. I would have to go look. Oh, here's another big one. It is, can you tell, <laughs> starting to get dark out because it was so nice and sunny out all day, but we do have rain moving in. So it is starting to get darker out the sun. <coughs> <coughs> I made it through this whole video without coughing and now that I, we call it for schluckied. Now that I for schluckied, <laughs> now I start coughing. 
I think that was a made up word that my mother made up, unless some of you others in the area, I'm sure it, if, if anybody else did hear of that word, it was only in our area. But my mother had a tendency of making up words. And, you know, us kids growing up, we just kind of took over the words and now my kids have. So when they get married or they, you know, have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, and they use one of those terms, you know, their spouse or girlfriend, boyfriend kind of look at them like, what? <laughs> what just came out of your mouth? Did you just say for schlucked? <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> uh, do any of you have any made up type of weird words that you say? And people kind of just look at you like, huh? Uh, I'm trying to think of another example of something my mother made up. And I can't think of anything right off the top of my head. But, oh yeah. There were a, a few words. <laughs> uh, that's funny. They are words you will not ever, ever find in a Webster's Dictionary. Even though they have added some modern terms you know every year you hear of some of these you know real modern terms that you would have never years ago found in a Webster's dictionary it's terms that these young uns these millennials use all the time you know terms with you know technology and even vlogging. I mean, was vlogging a term years ago? Especially, you know, eons ago, before the internet was even around, before there were even computers. And for you young ones out there, you cannot imagine what life would even be like. No computers, no cell phones, no internet. Oh yeah, when we did our high school papers, our term papers and any type of papers, you had to use physical books, physical encyclopedias, which, yeah, they are no longer. I can remember the set of, oh, I cannot remember how many volumes like 26 volumes or something of an encyclopedia and then the index book and these were big thick heavy books that you would do your research in and then my mom on another shelf <coughs> had kept a whole bunch of <clears throat> past volumes of Reader's Digest. And thank heavens she did because in our papers we would quote from those articles, you know. And then, of course, you had to make the separate page of, you know, where you quoted from and all of that stuff. But, yeah, we had to use physical things that you held in your hand called books and magazines, periodicals. <laughs> no cell phones. Phones that were attached to the wall and had a cord. You couldn't walk around the house with them, take them to the store with you. Matter of fact, I know I talked about this too in a past color and chat, but we were on what's called a party line, number 14, middle purple pink 125. And a party line was the pits. <laughs> because there were multiple people, just like it sounds, multiple people on the same phone line. So your phone number, you know, was, of course, unique. But 
your phone numbers all shared the same telephone line. So you would pick up the phone, and if somebody else on that line happened to be talking, you would hear their conversation, you know, when you picked up the phone. So it's like, okay, so-and-so's on the phone. you got to hang up and wait till they're done talking with their conversation before you could make your phone call. I know, unreal, right? And we happened to have an older lady that was our neighbor. Keep in mind, we lived out in the country, so that's why we had party lines, because um, they just didn't run as many phone lines out in the rural areas at that time. And so we had to share, you know, the telephone lines that were out there. In the city, I don't think they had party lines, but us out in the country, we did. And yeah, this older lady <laughs> down the block from us uh, had a tendency of being very gabby. <laughs> and she would be on the phone for, oh gosh, I don't want to say hours, but over an hour. Let's put it that way. I don't remember. I'm sure there were times it was probably hours, and we would get so upset, especially us young ones, because we wanted to call our friend or something, you know, and couldn't get through, couldn't get through, go pick up the phone again. Oh, gosh, she's still on the phone. <laughs> Ugh. And then you get some others that you know get perturbed with you if you and your friend are on the phone for longer than 10 minutes and they will actually say something rude to you can you get off this phone now it's like i just waited for two hours for this phone <laughs> but you're taught to respect your elders right uh, yeah, I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, you figure you better go so you don't get chewed out by the other lady down the road. <laughs> oh, gosh, the good old days. Gosh, just talking about it brings back memories. Oh, my heavens. Such a different era of how we grew up. And especially out in the country, you know, we didn't have friends to play with. We only had siblings to play with. And now electronics. I mean, we had to make up games that we played with each other outside. And we would. We would play with each other. Believe it or not, actually played with our brother and sisters. And, of course, there was squabbling. We were siblings, but for the most part, we got along. And now that we're all grown up, we definitely all get along. I am so lucky to have the family that I have. All of us are very considerate of the other, and yeah, it's it's awesome. We were raised right. <laughs> we have our mom and dad, especially mom. We grew up more with mom. We didn't see dad as much because he worked shifts. He had shift works shift work where one week he worked nights and the next week he worked days and so the week that he worked nights and I don't even know if they do this where they do shift work and you change because to me that would be so hard you know it's one thing to get used to your body will get used to shift you know working third shift and you got to work throughout the eve you know the night 
you just, you know, your body adjusts to sleeping during the day and being up at night. But when you do shift work and it's alternating, you know, one week you're working during the day and then the next week you're working during the night. So how does your body ever get used to that? I don't know. And he did it for many, many, many years. So when he worked nights, we didn't see him at all. And when he worked days, of course, he had to get up early. So we would eat supper. And he would sit down to watch the news and then he'd go to bed. And his bedroom was right off the kitchen downstairs. So poor mom had to keep all six of us kids quiet so that dad could sleep. And I'd always feel so bad because, you know, of course we're kids. We're, you know, from little on up to, you know, older. Grade school up through high school. And, oh yeah. <laughs> There were many times he'd come stomping out and yell, Will you get me quiet? It's like, yikes. When Dad yells, you listen. 125, middle of purple pink. Is that this one? Oh, another one I can't hardly read. No. That's pink carmine. And that's number 16. So I'm going to leave that out. 14, middle of purple pink. Hmm. Now that's deep red. I don't have any other pinks in here. What the heck? Hmm. <laughs> Middle purple pink. Don't tell me I used that one already. 125. No, I didn't. Huh. 125, nope. 131. That's magenta. I'm going to be using that too. That's lilac. I don't need that. Let me look on my color chart and see where that one is. It's number 14, middle purple pink, 125. That's after Pink Matter Lake, which was number 13. Okay, I'm really confused. I got 16 and 15 here, but I can't find number 14. Middle, uh-oh, <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I think I used the wrong one, Pink Matter Lake, 129, yeah, I did, I think, 129, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Okay, do I got a pen that moved somewhere? <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 134, 12, and then 129, 13, and 14. Okay, why were you up there? I don't know. Okay. Let's see if it's a different color or if I just really screwed something up. I don't know. There's only two 14s down here. So, yeah, see, that's the same color. Oh, well. I don't know what happened. And I'm coloring sideways, so... Excuse the messiness. Didn't feel like flipping the book for this little bit. Yeah, we got the same color here. Darn. Good thing there's only two of these. So, But this color is going to be the same up through here. Darn it. 
Huh. I don't understand what I did wrong. Oh, well. It'll still look pretty. See how easy this ink goes down on this paper. Mm. Okay. Oh no, we got this one down through here too. As you were watching me, you probably know what I did wrong because I was probably calling out the number and then colored in the wrong one or something. Unless you do what I do and you're just coloring along, doing your own thing, just listening until I say, oops. <laughs> and then you look up to see what I did wrong. Got a fuzzy on here. what I do sometimes. <laughs> You're listening and all of a sudden somebody says whoops or darn it or something like that. And you're like, oh, what happened? And then I'll look up. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just coloring along. Glance up once in a while, see how their picture's going. Is that pretty much what you guys do too? Because I know, especially during these long color and chats, or at least I hope you guys are not just sitting there watching somebody color for a couple hours. <laughs> That'd be pretty sad. <laughs> As I get a life. <laughs> okay. Nope, that's the last one. So number 15 is a magenta. See, I should have gone and pulled out all the pens, put them in order ahead of time, and I wouldn't have had this problem, right? I will have to remember that in the future. When I do my next one with alcohol markers, I am going to pull them out ahead of time. Or I may end up doing the same flipping thing. Many times I do have them pulled out ahead of time. When I do um, Sun Life Drawing Color by Numbers, like the mosaics, because in Sun Life Drawing books, I use my Copics. I know, gasp. But I can match the color so exact. And, you know, with all the color that you have in Copics, you can pretty much match anything. And that brush tip just works so wonderfully. Okay, I'm going to turn you on your side again here so that I can color this way easy. Where are we? Wrong way. Okay. Maybe I should have split this up into two. I really didn't think this was going to take this long because these sections are so big. But I guess because this book is so big that... You know, takes a while to color in each section. But, again, it, it makes for one upload, one thumbnail to make, um, one video to render. Now, granted, it takes a long time to render these long color and chats, but 
He can go and do something else while it's doing that. It's not like you gotta sit there and babysit it the whole while. Oh, I can hear the birdies singing outside. I had watched a diamond painting unboxing. I think it was an, um, no, she was doing a drill with me, which is what they call it. We call it a diamond painting and, or diamond paint and chat. They call it a drill with me. And she was doing, this is Ella from Kicking Cancer's Butt. <laughs> if you are a diamond painter and you've ever seen her. She is hilarious. Oh, she is so funny. She is a cancer survivor and just witty. Oh God, she's just so funny. And she was diamond painting out on her patio and you could just hear the birds chirping away in the background. It was so neat to listen to. As she was talking and stuff, you would just hear, and you could tell the birds were relatively close because they were pretty loud. Not loud enough where it, you know, was annoying or interrupted what she was saying or anything, but it was just really neat to listen to. I love listening to the birds sing outside. Again, because it's spring and we finally have the birds singing back. We do have winter birds too. It is just gorgeous when you get to see like a cardinal. We have a few nesting cardinals around. And when everything is so, you know, just white and bare, you know, around here in wintertime, and then you see the male cardinal up in a tree, oh, they stand out like a sore thumb. That bright, bright red which is what this looks like, but it's actually supposed to be magenta. So yeah, I definitely can get closer colors next time. Yeah, it's a little different than the red, I guess. And this is our last number. Getting sick of me yet? <laughs> or have I put you to sleep yet? Sleep. Oh gosh, I haven't watched that movie in ages. We used to watch it as kids every single year. And that's when the whole entire thing was in black and white. And then they went to the second half, colorized. And when they went to colorize the second half, it was like, oh my gosh, that was just so awesome. Now again, you young'uns can't imagine, unless you like the oldie goldie movies, you can't imagine watching a movie in black and white. And we actually, as kids, when I was younger, younger, we only had black and white TV. Color TVs weren't out yet. <laughs> Boy, I am really, really dating myself. Wow, I gotta quit doing that. No, I'm not 100. I'm not 90. I'm actually not even 60. <laughs> So I'm not real ancient, but that just kind of goes to show how fast technology has gone. I mean, oh, there's another 15. I'm going to quick color that in because I think that's the only one I missed here. I mean, we are just growing by leaps and bounds, and sometimes it's just really scary 
because the more that's automated, number one, the more that can go wrong, right? And number two, the more that hackers can hack to get into things. Things are getting so automated for us. I mean, our smart homes, you can tell Alexa to do just about anything besides bring you breakfast in bed. <laughs> Boy, that'd be nice. But, you know, that's all the more that hackers can hack into if you're connected to the internet for anything like that. I mean, they have now that are hooked to your Wi-Fi to open and close your garage door, open and unlock your, open and unlock, lock and unlock your front door in case you got to let a dog sitter in or... Although that can be dangerous these days, too. You know, or maybe it's a lat what we used to call a latchkey kid. I'm sure they're not called that anymore. For kids that would have to come home by themselves after school when the parents weren't home and they babysat themselves. We called them latchkey kids. You know, so you can let your kid in so your kid doesn't have to, at that time when they had to carry keys. You know, you could let your kid in then. Now, you just have numbers to punch in. I even have that on my door. I'm getting modernized. You know, there's no keys anymore. Even, you know, the more modern cars, it's a push button, no keys. I'm sure you have key backups though, don't you? I don't know, never had a push button car for starting it. Or you got the remote start, especially in winter time for us here, that is so nice. I don't have that on mine either. But you know, you can be in a nice warm house and start up your car when it's below zero outside and you got a nice toasty nice toasty warm car when you get out there so that remote start comes in really handy up here and i have spent all afternoon on this picture i have to yeah get this done and i'm probably not going to render it right away because i want to get at diamond painting but I did want to get this video made so I can put it up when Zoe does and then yeah work on the little mini mouse for mini Maddie I kept saying I got to see if I got stretcher bars for that size because I make my own stretched canvases and then paint the borders. I, I pick stretcher bars that are um, an inch wider on each side, so two inches wider total. So I have an inch border around the diamond painting itself and I pick a coordinating color of acrylic paint and paint the borders and the edges of the canvas once I make the stretched canvas and staple it to the stretcher bars and all that good stuff. And then I glue down the diamond painting after I've cut off you know, the edges and where the key is and all of that stuff. And so I finally remembered to go and see if I had stretcher bars because I have a number of sets of stretcher bars under my bed that I have bought ahead of time for some diamond paintings that I have sitting here to do because I was placing you know, another order with Dick Blick and I needed a little bit more to qualify for the free shipping. So I thought, well, I might as well order some stretcher bars. 
and uh, I have some stretcher bars I can use. The one side worked out perfect because the one side was 19 inches, so I needed 21 inch stretcher bars. So that worked out good. I have two 21 inch stretcher bars that worked perfect. The other side was 16 inches, so I needed 18 inch stretcher bars. I did not have 18 inch stretcher bars, but I had a number of 17 inch stretcher bars. So on one side, it's going to be just a tad narrower than the other. And I hate, hate, hate doing that, but because you know, the perfectionist in me, but that little bit should not look that bad. And it's for a little girl's room. So I am not going to make a special order just for a couple of stretcher bars because I don't need canvas. I have plenty of canvas and I don't need anything else right now from Dick Blick. So wouldn't make sense just to order a couple of dollar something stretcher bars and pay, you know, almost five bucks in shipping. So... I am going to use the 17 inch stretcher bars. So I have everything here to finish it. I'll have to see what color paint I want to use and all that good stuff. But I'm only about halfway done with the diamond painting. Oh my gosh, we're done. Oh, yay, yay, yay. Oh my gosh, it is so pretty. Look at that. Is that not pretty? Oh, I love it. And I am really glad I put the purple in there rather than the dark blue. I mean, I guess the dark blue would have looked nice with these other two shades of blue. But with the pinks and stuff in here, I think that purple looks great. Oh, when I look at it in the iPad or on the iPad from my camera up there, it looks oh, even more stunning than when I look at it this close up because you can see it. You know, when you look at things through a camera, it looks so much different than when you look at it in real life. <laughs> so what do you think of this gorgeous, colorful rose? Oh, I think it turned out stunning. And this is all the wild colors in all, like I said, in all of these pictures. So, oh, they're just so much fun. And as you can see, very easy to do. They do take some time, but very big open wide spaces. So your alcohol markers would work great in these books. So I really hope you liked this a long, long color and chat. I'm sure it's probably a good couple hours long. Like I said, it's in three different sections, so I really don't know how long it is, but I hope you really did like this. I hope you were coloring along or doing some diamond painting, or I did put you to sleep and you're snoozing now. <laughs> Happy dreams. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you liked it, please hit that like button. And subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody is having a terrific weekend. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.